Thank you for Patreon now for donating to the Patreon. Hey you guys, it's Vandy as well back in another card fight Vanguard deck profiles. If you guys enjoy, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and donate to the Patreon. Let's get on started. Today we have Keir Sanctuary PBD for set four. So obviously, you know, PBD has I don't know, set four they decided to give us some support, and you know, it was really weird and out of the ordinary considering encounter cards, you know, being a rare thing. You think they want to get support, especially if double rare level like they did. But then they also released news that we're getting PBO and Dragonic Overlord to the end, followed by another Keter Sanctuary encounter card in in the next set. So I guess it kind of makes sense that they got support in set four. And in set four, PBD actually got pretty good. Like set two felt weird. Set three added some consistency. When I mean some, I mean like one or two cards that you could use. And then set four, the deck actually feels like a functionable deck. So let's go ahead and get this started, shall we? First up, we have our starter and full bow. Grade 0, boost, 5k shield, 6k base, auto, and draw upon if you want second draw a card. Nothing too special about the standard starter. It is not a, This deck does not have a specific starter that you want to use for your skills because none of them require the specific starter. If they ever made a blaster starter, you could just... I would suggest running it because PBD can call blasters from your soul when it's rode upon. I mean, when you place it, so it would be nice if they had a blaster starter. But even then, it, this is still a fine starter to start off with. And, you know, ride line, technically speaking, because... Full Bow was the original starter for Blaster Dark Ride Line. So that's our starter. Over Trigger, Enlight Dragon Deity of Honors on Martonia is what we're going with. I swear, that's the one time I feel like I said it right, and I never and I will never remember how to say it ever again. 5k base, 50k power, grade zero. Sorry. 5k power, 50k shield, grade zero is boost, over trigger. You may have one over trigger in your deck when build as a trigger, remove that card, draw a card, choose one of your units, it gets one melee for the turn, and reveal during draft check, add a fate's additional effect, which is do uh, until end of turn, you can perform draft checks for the battle your regard attack. So you always get that guaranteed one million in a draw, making for a really good defensive card and for a really good aggressive card on any form, but then you can also get draft check for rear guards. And now that's pretty good in PBD. I do definitely say PBD is a deck where maybe the draft checks won't matter on rears because the way i pbd the way i play pbd personally it's like i never really end up with rear guards to attack with to begin with because i'm always very cautious about calling rear guards and then eventually i know i'm gonna have to call triggers while i see other people who won't struggle to call rear guards with pbd and then proceed to hit big numbers and get extra draft checks off it if you want to go with Elbari just to make all of your rear guards that they have to be triggers hit big you can but i do think armor is better because you're going to need the draft checks to refill the hand that you're constantly nuking three out of so that's our over trigger of choice trigger wise we run three crits and blade feather dragon 4k base 15k shield grade zero with boost critical trigger auto rear at the end of the battle that it boosted put it to soul choose when it gets plus two for the turn okay you know the two is not really that important when you run it for the soul gaining ability so you can spam maka more now if it comes to the question of Wait, I had a point. Oh, yes. Wait, no, I didn't. Oh, yeah. So if it comes to the question of why I don't run four crit, I only run a three crit, not four, not five, not six, not seven, not eight. The reason for is because your Vanguard PBD, it already has an extra crit on it. That already applies pressure. People already want to PG the Vanguard anyways. But also the rear guards, like I said before in this deck, or at least when I play it, I know other people who have similar builds play it a lot differently. I choose not to call rear guards as often, so I, I don't want to like just get critical triggers and then it always affect the vanguard only. So I might as well focus on like draw triggers I can fill up your hand and front triggers to where when I do call front or rear guard circles, they can get more power instead of just a critical trigger which applies a slight bit of pressure that isn't really that big in comparison. So three crits. We run four draw triggers in Protection Magic Pro OB, uh, 5k shield, grade 0, boost, 4k base. Draw trigger continues guard circle. If your opponent's vanguard's grade 3 greater, it gets plus 5k shield. Same ability as the front trigger we have, which is Bard of Heavenly Song Outpack. They both have the same skill. This is, 120, ah, this is a 20k shield. This is a 10k shield if your opponent's at grade 3. Obviously makes for a really good thing if you're going second to where if your opponent tries to rush you at grade 3. Unless they're hitting really big numbers, the 10 slash 20k shields are going to be really helpful for that. And draw triggers to a discard fodder in this deck. And draw triggers also replace the 3 rear guards you're constantly sacking out of deck and this makes the rear guards in your farm will get plus 10 so yeah and then we're on four heals and healer of heavenly staff arshes because you need heals i mean that's a debatable statement i'm willing to play a deck without heals i have played a deck without heals that wasn't agreed on by the way and do i regret that decision no do I think it was a good idea? No. <laughs> Four copies of Arshas, though. I'm not going to go into the description of the horde as of my own stupidity, because if I did, we would be here for 20 minutes. 
Uh, then we have our grade ones. First up, we have three copies of Witch of Pandering Bruner. 5K base, 5K show, grade, zero, grade one with boost. Okay, so in premium, this is immediately searchable via domain. Continues to be regarded if you have a Vanguard with Blaster in its card name. When this unit will be retired for your card's cost, it's regarded as retiring two rear guards. Cool. So I believe all PBDs, if not all, like most of them require you to sack three rear guards. So this always fills the cost of two of them, which is really nice because that means you only need one more. And in D, that's really good because like when you consider things like Sharon, who is a rest this card, look at the top card, call it to rear guard, and if this is that card, then cool, you have Sharon who is already rest, I mean, who's already retire fodder because she's rested, but then this, because it's a, to count it as two, it's really easy just to get the retires off, and as long as you have a blaster vanguard, it doesn't matter whose cost it's retired for, as long as your vanguard's a blaster, it counts as two. So, three copies of Bruner because she's a really nice card, the only downside is she's a 5k base, but really, that's not really a downside considering premium's a thing you can just demand it out of deck. Speaking of Sharon, or Sharon, whatever you choose to call her, we have three copies of Black Sage Sharon. 7k base, grade 1, boost, 5k show. I don't know why I was about to call it a grade 5. Auto when it's placed on rear. If you have a Vanguard with Blaster in its card name, rest this unit, look at the top card. You may call it to rear guard. If it's a unit, at the end of your turn, retire that called card and put it at the top of the deck if you did not call. So, on place, you could choose to rest it, get a free look at the top card of your deck, and if it's a trigger, you put it back. And if it's not, you can call it, and it, it's an impossible attacker. I definitely know some people who play PBD choose to use that ability, and they get really lucky with it because they get to call it like grade threes and twos and stuff like that. I know when I play it, I'm not that lucky. I always see a trigger from this, and there's been one occasion where I haven't, and it was a PBD, and honestly, I would have preferred to see a trigger at that point. So Sharon is really good if you play her in an early rush because she can possibly get you units, and she gives you two retire fodder. So three copies of Sharon because she's really good. Next up, we have three copies of the thing that makes this deck good, honestly, and I don't run it at four because it requires... Oh, wait, no, I, yeah, I don't run it at four because you don't need it at four. Three copies of Knight of Armor of Piercing Mugain. 8k base, 5k show, grade one with boost. Auto once placed on rear guard from your hand. If you have a Vanguard Blaster in its card name, discard a card from your hand, look at top two, choose up to two unit cards from among them, call them as rear guard as rest, and discard the rest. So as long as they're not orders, and there's only two orders in this deck in total, then that's just a free two call via discarding of one and gives you two t uh, retire targets honestly that is amazing Th like and it costs no counter blast either it costs no soul blast that is just a singular discard to net two rear guards and you can retire this thing for pbd's cost because it's an on place only downside is like you can't loop it because it, if you call from deck it won't effect won't go off but either way mugen's a really good or mugen is a really good card she gets you a board she gets your retire fodder three of and then we have our PG and Age Smire Dragon. 6k base, grade 1 boost, 0 shield, can choose Sentinel, you have to force Sentinel in your deck. Auto ones put on guard circle, choose one of your units and it cannot be done in battle. If your hand has two or more cards, choose a card from your hand, discard it. Standard PG ability, nothing too special about I'm sorry, I just, I had a thought, <laughs> and it's very funny, and I know a lot of people are going to yell at me for it, and it, all of you will eventually figure it out, like, wait two weeks from now and you'll probably think you'll you'll figure out what i'm talking about eventually i know one person definitely will if i drop the hint on it but based off where i stopped at you're probably going to assume what it is anyways if you don't know what this means this pg basically means if this and only one other card in your hand when you place it on guard circle you don't have to discard anything for it which basically means you can be as aggressive as you want in this deck and this is definitely a deck that this is good in because you are constantly having to call three rear guards or at the very least two because this is kind of as two of them to get off PBD skill, and that's really good in aggressive deck. Now, if you're wondering if you need to run this PG over the original PG for this deck to be good, yeah, it adds for consistency, but I'm running the set two version, you know, the one that doesn't feel super consistent without this, and the deck still works pretty fine. So you don't really need this, same with the overtrigger, but this is like the lineup you run if you can get the cards. Four of Ages Mire though, because the PG just really helps out and allows you to be slightly more aggressive with the deck, even if you're kind of sparing with the hand cards like me. And then our last grade one is the grade one of the ride line, which is one copy, only in the ride deck, of Blaster Javelin. AK base, 5k show, grade one with boost, all the ones wrote upon by Blaster Dark, reveal the top card of your deck, and you call it to rear guard as rest if it's a unit card, and discard if it isn't. So unlike Sharon, where it's a choice of whether you call it or not, this is a required call and if it's not a unit, which is one, which involves it being one of the two orders in this deck, you send it to drop, but pretty much is a guaranteed free call for PBD, and this rarely doesn't go off. I mean, PB, ah, BD, Blaster Dark. Wait, I just realized. Oh, wait, no, no, I'll explain that later. And then continues to regard during your turn, if you have a Vanguard Blaster in its card name, it gets plus two. 
So 10k rearguard, cool, cool, cool. So it's a, basically a grade two, and it's a call target for PBD if it ends up in soul, which is going to, because it's only in the right deck. You don't really need it in the main deck when you have this, which can net you a board for retiring, this, which can net you an extra unit for retiring, and this, which is literally just two units when retiring. So there's no real reason to run this in the main deck, but it's still a good of card to run in the right deck, especially because well, you don't need it. You'll want it for Blaster Dark skill, and you're gonna want it for PBD skill. So one of Blaster Javelin. And then we have our grade twos. Three copies of Darkness Made in Maka. 10k base, 5k shield, grade two with intercept. All the ones placed on rear guard. If you have a Vanguard Blaster in his car name, gets plus five for the turn, and then you soul boss one and retire another rear guard. To look at the top five cards of your deck, choose up to one grade two, grade one or less unit from among them. Call it to rear guard and shuffle your deck. Okay, because there's only two orders in this deck, that's a guaranteed skill that will always go off where you could look at the top five and call a unit from them more or less i mean there's a chance none of them will be grade ones but that's highly doubtful but so soul boss one retire unit okay cool you have a constant retire fodder and you have a good chunk of soul on this deck gets a guarantee plus five just by being placed because your vanguard will always be a blaster and if it's not then i greatly question you and can get you a unit to replace the thing you kill and if it, you killed something that's rested like sharon Gets you another unit, so that's probably going to be Stan. All around, Mach is pretty good, and I remember her specifically and Burner specifically, or specifically, because when I did my set two or set three PBD deck profile, I forgot which one it was, I didn't end up putting them in the slides, and I had recorded the video beforehand, which means I had to record that video twice, and it was very grueling, and I figured that out the day before the video was supposed to go up, so I had to speed run the shit to record or fix record and edit that entire video i think i was able to do it but god for the love of christ that was very hard to do maka either way is a really good grade two and yet for some reason after set two i stopped using her like she has only been discard fodder so far since set two but she's still pretty good she does serve her purpose and i've learned that discard fodder is very important thank you for that one coco Beal. three copies of maka four copies of knight of severe punishment dead 10k base, 5k shield, grade 2 with intercept. Auto when it's retired from rear guard for the cost of your card. Look at top 3. Choose up to one card, blaster incarnate from one of them, reveal it, put it to your hand, and put the rest on the bottom of your deck. Okay, cool. Get you a free top 3 search just by being killed. Has a retire fodder aspect to it. And it can, send, and it can stack at the bottom of your deck. So if you want to, you can play Misaki, Oracle, Think Tank, and then just uh, stack the bottom of your deck. Now. I don't know how they're going to do PBO. The last time they gave us evolutions, they were grade fours. I don't know if they're going to make PBO and Dragonic Overlord at the end grade fours or if they're going to keep them as grade threes. Because I think if they're going to keep them as grade threes, it's going to be very weird because then you'd be tempted to run them in the Riot deck because you physically could. So they would have to make skills that are worth keeping them in the main deck and keeping the originals in the ride deck otherwise like for example if you have pbd or dragonic overlord in the soul do a thing and like half of its ability the good ability is restricted to that so they could do that or if they make it a grade four this is an easy way to search i mean regardless any copy that's in the main deck this makes it an easy way to search for now there's only a total of seven cards in the main deck that are blasters no six cards actually but it still searches them so four of gayhead because or ged because Get your free search by being a retire fodder. And then our last grade two is our main grade two and the grade two that goes in the ride deck. Three of in the main deck, one of in the ride deck of Blasto Doc. And I just wanted to let it know, be clear, when I was reading, uh, I forgot who it was, though, I think it was Blaster uh, Javelin. I said, oh, that's interesting. It's because PBD, if you take out the P, you get BD. And BD is Blaster Dark. PBD is Phantom Blaster Dragon. I, I don't know. I just found it funny as, uh, like, it's a similar type of deal i don't know grade two intercept 5k shield 10k base auto when it's placed on vanguard rear guard current plus one nuke another rear guard choose one of your opponent's rear guards kill it and it gets plus one drive so you know it gets twin drive it doesn't get the twin drive on your rear guard circle unless you can make your rear guard circle vanguard circle which means the turn you ride this it becomes a twin drive and blaster javelin gives you a free target by looking at the top card of your deck remember there's orders in this deck it is still physically possible that you will not hit a grade one or anything that can be retired foddered but let's all be fair the chance of that happening are minuscule and i find that very funny because i told my friend that when he played this deck and the first card he did and this was the first time he ever played this deck the first card he looked at was in order and i felt really bad for him because he couldn't use uh, blaster dark but you know it's a way to get an extra drive which is really nice and every time this drive goes off i always get either a crit a heal or on rare occasions both because apparently if you get twin drive blaster dark you're always guaranteed one of the two and continues rear guard during your turn if your rear guard was retired this turn it gets plus five so 15k swinger 
If your rear guard was retired, really easy, pretty good. I wish that was a Vanguard skill as well, just to make it hit slightly harder on grade two turn. Because then again, most people don't really guard grade two Vanguard if it's the only thing on your board because they want counter blast. So four of Blaster Dark because he actually does something in the main deck because he does still kill a rear guard on your opponent's field. Granted, it requires a counter blast cost on your side. You don't really have that many counter chargers, but he can get you plus five on rear guard when your unit's retired. So it may be a skill boost, but it's still a boost nonetheless. Four of. And then we're on to grade threes. Two copies of Night of War Damage Fusado. Grade three, twin drive, persona right, 13k base, continues rear guard. This unit cannot be chosen by card effects, or by your opponent's card effects, and auto rear guard when this unit attack hits, counter charge one, soul charge one. So on hit pressure in a deck that does a decent amount of counter blasting, so obviously they're gonna block this whenever they get the chance. Then they're gonna block the Vanguard because it has a double crit on it, so then they can only ever take one rear guard attack at a time, which means eventually they're just gonna lose hand, having to one, make up the board that PBD gets rid of, and then two, guard at least two of your columns, which is really nice. And you know, they can't kill it via effects, which means they have to ram into it to get rid of it. So all around is really good, and I like it. The only reason why it's not at four is because it has been known in the past to be pretty clunky in my hand. And on the occasions it wasn't clunky, it wouldn't show up at all. Like it was either all four show up in my hand really quickly or only or none of them show up and one of them gets damage checked. That's how it always was. And then suddenly when I dropped it down to two, I have actually seen it more in my hand. I can't explain it. It's just how the deck works. Two cups of Fusado because you do want it in your deck as a on hit pressure and something that's hard to get rid of. And then our last normal unit is our main grade 3, Phantom Blaster Dragon, otherwise known as PBD, and to most people's hearts. Grade 3, Twin Drive Persona Red, 13k base, 3 copies in the main deck, 1 copy in the ride deck. Other one is placed on Vanguard Circle, choose a grade, I mean sorry, choose a card with Blaster Dragon's card name from your soul, and may call it to rear guard regardless of grades, so you can call um, Blaster Dark, you can call Blaster Javelin Hell if you Persona Ride it, you can call a copy of it from soul, and if they gave us a starter with Blaster and its card name, we could call that from soul. In Act Vanguard, once per turn, counter plus 1 and retire 3 rear guards, choose up to 2 of your opponent's rear guards, retire them, and this unit gets plus 10k power and plus 1 critical. So, counter plus 1 and nuke 3 of your rear guards, cool, so nuke either this and this, or use this and then nuke all 3 of them, and you get to add an additional critical, plus 10, perfect that applies a 15k at the very least but no one's going to 15k to and a one to pass a vanguard they're going to pg it so pg fodder and you can nuke two of your opponent's rear guards meaning they constantly have to call two out of hand and to protect against this they're going to have to constantly at least throw down two cards so four cards going down just to defend against one card which is really nice and if you have fusado on one of your columns most likely especially if you're in a desperate situation that's going to rely on another one card unless you persona ride then another two cards maybe so all around pbd is really good get you numbers, forces a guaranteed PG more or less, and forces out like four hand cards to prevent its skill and its attack from killing your opponent. Three of in the main deck, one of in the red deck. You can also fetch, it can also fetch you a rear guard slash retire powder, so. And then we have two copies of our final card, which is a Blitz Order, Divine Protection of the Abyss Dragon. Grade three, Blitz Order, choose one of your vanguards with Blaster and its card name being attacked, and until end of the battle, that it gets plus 15k power. Then you choose one of your rear guards, and you may retire it. If you retired, the unit gets plus 15 again. So you get a guaranteed 15, and it's better than Hopeful Testudo, because Hopeful Testudo required three units. This just requires you, granted, you have to pick the vanguard, but as long as it's a blaster, which is always will be, it's a free 15. Followed by, you can choose to kill a rear guard, and it's a free 30 instead. All around, this is a really good blitz order, like there's no reason not to run it. It, it brings your vanguard to 43 via just placing it and killing a rear guard, and it's just really good, probably one of the best blitz orders ever. Two of this card. And that's it for the deck, I hope you guys enjoyed. Honestly, this deck is really fun, definitely in set two, it was very... I'm not going to say it was inconsistent, but it definitely didn't feel like it was playing at its best. It felt like really subpar, at least to me when I was playing it. Set 3, okay, got it over here, made it slightly more consistent. Set 4, it actually feels competent and, like, really good and complete. Like, the Blitz Order is a really good way to defend myself with. We have, like, sorry, where is it? We have Mugain, who has literally been my single retire fodder for the entirety of the game, meaning I can be more consistent with the cards I call, such as I can call Sharon now, just to get an extra attack in the early game rather than keeping her in hand for a later fodder of PVD. You can use Blaster Dark more because you have more rear guards to sack. 
all around, like it's the addition of one card that makes this deck really crazy in terms of attacking power, and then there's one card that makes the deck really good in terms of defending power. So all around, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, join to the Patreon, join Discord, follow Twitch, and I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to stand up your vanguards. Come <laughs> on,